person who's most excited about a new hotel room is Tara. Yeah. She goes running around all excited she's looking, all the rooms. checking everything. She comes in, she's checking everything out, wagging her tail, yeah. looking at us. And then she uh, she comes over and does a little like, I want you to play with me kind of lunge. Yeah. Fun, eh, buddy? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Like this. God, I, like I love this it. Place. Lots of room in here. <laughs> I know, and I know where my bed is now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and it's a little carpet for me right here. Yeah. I can lay on this carpet. Yeah. yeah. Well, fortunately, we don't have to look forward to sleeping on the side of the road between Happy Valley and Cartwright for we've been able to extend our stay here one more night in Happy Valley. So we drove down to the end of the peninsula that the town is on, and this is the Churchill River. The Mighty Churchill. For our daily dog walk, we find Birch Brook Nordic Ski Club and take an interesting hike to the top of a nearby hill. And we head out in the mossy regions of Mordor. Canadian Forces Base Goose Bay is the reason for the town of Goose Bay and its support community of Happy Valley. It's the home of five wing of the Royal Canadian Air Force and the 444 Combat Support Squadron. Let's take a quick look at the Labrador Military Museum. In 1942, this was a busy place with its three very long hard surface runways, refueling aircraft headed for the war in Europe. At the time, the Dominion of Newfoundland was not yet a part of Canada. During the Cold War, the United States Air Force used the south side of the base and called it Goose Air Base. For a few months in 1950, 11 nuclear weapons were stored here, including one which had to be jettisoned from a malfunctioning B-50 bomber into the St. Lawrence River. In 1973, the Space Shuttle Enterprise, piggybacking on a 747 transport, landed here while on the way to a European tour. It was the first time the Space Shuttle had landed outside the USA. During 9-11, seven airliners were diverted here from their American destinations. It was the first Canadian airport to receive diverted aircraft. The large airport is also used today by commercial and recreational aircraft. We drive up Highway 520, crossing the bridge at Shishachiu into the small town of Northwest River. Up until 1961, if you wanted to cross the water here, you had to do so by boat. After that, a cable car spanned the river, 
and in 1980, the present modern bridge was built. Northwest River is one of the oldest settlements in Labrador, starting off as a French trading post in 1743. The post still exists as a museum. Later, the town became a hub of the Hudson's Bay Company. We visit the Labrador Interpretation Center, a very impressive look at Inuit culture and way of life. What, you, what, is, what is it called? Labradorite. Labradorite. Okay. Yeah. Only found here in Green, uh, Greenland and... Uh, Southern Argentina. Yeah, Southern Argentina, strange to say. They had some um, jewelry made with them. Yes, there was two, two uh, Inuit gods and they were arguing over who had the most power. It was Tongat and Tonasuk. Yeah. So Tonasuk said he had more power. So he put an iceberg in the middle of the bay to stop the seals from coming in. The torn gets so I have a little more power than him. He turned the iceberg into um, an island. And the island exists today. You can go to Nain and it's there. It's called Iceberg Island. Mm -hmm. Well, Tonasuk was so mad that he banged on the rocks and he scared all the northern lights and they hidden rock. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where they came from. Great story. This bit of artwork here is apparently done by pen. If you can imagine the work involved. Highway 520 is only 45 kilometers long and this is the end of it. There's no way to drive farther in this part of Canada except by snowmobile. To the north is Torngat Mountains National Park, a staggeringly beautiful and wild lonely land. There are no roads and no campgrounds. An armed Inuit guard will keep you from being stalked by polar bears. This is not a land to be taken lightly. 
The next morning, we begin a long drive west, then south, then east, then north, to reach the hamlet of Cartwright.